magnify the Lord? He's almighty. There is none like God. And if he is your God, oh, there is no better situation that anybody can be in. But live your life unto him. He's willing to be anybody's God. So long as you are willing to turn around, give your life to Jesus. Become born again. Walk in the ways of God, in the word of God, according to his instructions, according to his commandments, according to his laws. Today we are going to read Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 11 and 12. Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 11 and 12. 12. Thus you shall say to them, The gods that have not met the heavens and the earth shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. He has met the earth by his power. He has established the world by his wisdom and has stretched out the heavens at his discretion. Who rules over your life? Who is your God? Who controls your life? Whom do you submit to? Whom do you obey? I'm not asking if you go to church. There are so many people who go to church, they go to other places also. Is there an absolute authority over your life? Or is it a divided affair? And I'd like to put some things in perspective. There are people whose absolute authority is the devil and his kingdom, straightforward. There are people whose absolute authority is God and God himself, God Almighty, only. There are people who are mixed up completely. One side responds to the devil, another side responds to their mind, another side responds to the theories of this world, and some little side tends to respond to God. You find them in churches. You find pastors, ministers of God, workers in the church who belong to the Resecution, to the Freemason, to all manner of occult groups. You even find pastors who are so prominent in Ogboni cult and other cults. But here the scripture brings us to understand that everything outside of the God Almighty will perish, which means they have no future. And if you are dependent on them, what is your future? Perishing. Because obviously you will perish like your God. If that is your God. Now how about the human theories? Where does that one even go? Nothing. Some fellow propounds a theory today and you run along with it, tomorrow is dead. And well, a third fellow shows up another day, brings out his own theory. You also run along with it. Unto what? Everything that is not of God will perish in this earth because God made the heavens and the earth. God made you. All of the theories of evolution today have not been able to disprove the fact that God created man. You know where the theory of evolution ends? In a certain starting point. And that point is supposed to have been an atom, some speck, or whatever. Now, what brought the atom about? What brought that speck about? And what brought life to that atom? And anyway, how did the single atom multiply into men, multiply into earth, multiply into waters, multiply into trees? Those questions cannot be answered. They still get back to a supreme authority that controls the universe. You need to know that there is a supreme power over the earth, the one that made the earth, the heavens and the earth. The one that did everything. You see this earth? You see he stretched out the heavens at his discretion, the way he wanted it to go. He could have placed the earth anyhow. But just so that man will know that God is God, he placed the earth on water, ordinary sun on water. And for how many years that man have lived upon this earth? Has it washed away? No. It still remains. And we are here. And if Jesus tarries, our days will go, will pass. Another generation will still live on top of sun, which is on top of water. But ordinarily, sun should melt where there is water. Or at least the water should wash the sun away. That is how wonderful God is. 
He brings the moons and the stars and everything out in their seasons. But it brings us to one thing. If God has this kind of control, and if God takes care of all of the universe as diverse as it is, and he is the one that created everything you find on this earth, can't that God take care of you and take care of you comfortably, take care of you wholly and totally? Why do you need anything else to depend on? Why depend on the things that are passing away? The gods of this world pass away. If you are like 50 years old, the little god in your community that ruled there, is it still there till now? Some exist. Some exist in myth, not in reality. Some exist in your own mind. Oh, yes, there is a god. And you go there and pour libation to nothing. And I know demons are a pack, a penny. Any way you turn, you find demons. So when you pour libation, they will respond to you. You think it's that little God that you used to know about. The true God is the God Almighty, the maker of the heavens and the earth. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That's the true God. That's the one that you must yield to. If your life is controlled by him, if your affairs are controlled by him, who then will have any effect on your life. The truth is this. However you look at it, whether you run after demons or not, nothing has an effect on your life except God allows anything to happen. You know what? All things were created by him. And in him they live and have their being. That means everything you find in this world, they function through God, including the demons. Before Satan could do anything to Job, he had to go to God and get permission to do it. Are you a child of God? Don't be afraid of those things. They can't do anything to you except God says yes. And if God did say yes, you should find out why he said yes. Not because he wants to destroy you if you are his own, but because he wants to correct you. And then you should get corrected. Who is the ruler of your life? Who is in charge of your life? God is the owner of this universe. Drum it in. Let it sink in. God is the owner of the universe. If he is your God, there is nothing that can be lacking in your life. And somebody will say, I'm a child of God. There are things that are lacking in my life. Yes, to the extent that he permits. And he does that for your own good. All things work together for good. For those that love God and are called according to his purpose. All things. Even that thing that you think is not what you want. It's not the kind of situation you would have liked to have been in. And if you are a child of God, there's something you need to bear in mind. The thing that you call wrong thing is meant to teach a lesson. The thing that you call disastrous is meant to teach a, a lesson because the owner of the heavens and the earth knows how to direct you that you walk right. That thing, if you took the lesson, it will yield an abundance of good for you. But bottom line, submit yourself to God. Submit yourself in the hands of the Almighty. He will lift you up. He will make the best for you. He owns everything in this world. And if it is his desire to put you on top of the world, that is what he will do. I am not saying you shouldn't do anything for yourself. Do all things that he allows you to do. Go in the direction that he wants you to go. Walk very hard. He forbids laziness, indolence. Work hard. No that no evil can befall you for so long as the owner of everything is your God. Even the demons, he owns them. Lucifer, all of them submit to him. He is your God. And if he is indeed 
Blessed are you. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.